Hello. My name is B.I.G. Lawal. I'm the principal partner. Hello. Today, we would like to discuss the regulatory requirements for the installation of telecommunications masts and towers. As everyone knows, the physical elements of telecommunications network infrastructure, like masts, towers, antennas, microwaves, transponders, and the rest, must be put in place before any service provider can commence the provision of network services to subscribers. The provision of these uh, physical elements must be done contemporaneously with the requirements stipulated under Section 135 of the Nigerian Communications Act, NCA 2003, which of course requires all service providers to obtain all relevant government approvals and permits for the erection of base stations or the laying of fiber optic cables in any state in Nigeria. Permits being referred to here include right-of-way permit for the laying of fiber optic cables as well as other environmental certifications. Governmental bodies charged with the responsibility of granting the different approvals and permits are local governments, probably for stacking permits, state governments like the Lagos State Infrastructure Maintenance and Regulatory um, Agency, LASIMRA, formerly Urban Furniture Regulatory Unit, UFRU. We also have other governmental bodies such as the uh, National Environmental Standards and um, Regulations Enforcement Agency, NESREA, the Nigerian Air Space Management um, Authority, NAMA, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, uh, SCAA, as well as the Nigerian Communications Commission, which is the NCC, uh, the Independent Regulatory Authority when it comes to the telecommunications sector. First of mention must be made that both the NCC and NESRIA are unanimous on the need to establish physical environmental specifications to govern the installations of telecommunications masts and towers. In this regard, the NCC's guidelines on technical specifications for the deployment of infrastructure in the communications sector in Nigeria 2023, which now replaced the guidelines on technical specifications for the installations of telecommunications masts and towers 2009 provides that the siting of towers and masts must take cognizance of the nca 2003 and be guided strictly by the provisions of the collocation and infrastructure sharing guidelines established by the ncc in order to minimize the proliferation of masts and towers protect and promote public safety and mitigate adverse impact and the effect of heat, smoke, and noise pollutions from the generating sets on the community. We shall talk about the concept of collocation and infrastructure sharing in another video. Generally, installation of masts and towers less than 20 meters in height requires no approval from the NCC. But where a tower height exceeds 20 meters, it is mandatory for the tower owner to obtain a permit from the NCC before, uh, before erection. Further, the NCC's guidelines on technical specifications for the deployment of infrastructure in the communication sector 2023 discourages the installation of towers that are above 25 meters in height to be built within residential areas. However, where such towers above 25 meters in height are to be built in residential areas, they should be placed at a minimum setback of 10 meters distance to the nearest demised premises, excluding the fence. Also, power approval of the NCC must be sought and obtained before erection of such masts that are above 25 meters in height. Where in such cases the minimum setback of 10 meters cannot be achieved in any residential areas, an exemption may be granted to a service provider for a minimum setback of 7.5 meters instead of 10 meters. However, all service providers must ensure that they comply strictly with the best international standards and safety while installing their telecommunications infrastructure and contravention of these guidelines will cause the NCC to remove such towers and masts while the cost of removal will be borne by the tower owner. 
The SEC's 2023 guidelines set the maximum height for masts and towers at 150 meters, but it says further that a tower in excess of 150 meters may still be approved by the SEC if the increased height of the towers will not be detrimental to public health, safety, or general welfare, if it will not have negative effect on the neighborhood, and if the increased height is in conformity with the plan of the particular area and it will not impair compliance with any other applicable laws or guidelines. However, the 2023 guidelines warns that where approval is given to erect masts and towers in excess of 150 meters, all such towers should be placed at a minimum setback of uh, 50 meters from the right of way of all controlled access federal and state roadways so as to make room for unobstructed flight paths for helicopters. The 2023 guidelines also provide that the minimum spacing between two or more towers in excess of 55 meters in height must be up to one kilometer. Now, we also need to take a brief look at the provisions of the NESRIA's National Environmental Standards for Telecommunications and Broadcast Facilities Regulations 2011 which I shall henceforward call 2011 guide, uh, regulations, which apply to all telecommunications operations and services that have an impact on the environment. First of all, the 2011 regulations require service providers to install and operate telecommunication masts and towers in accordance with the provisions of the Environmental Impact Assessment Act. This is why service providers embarking on the installation of uh, telecommunications towers and masts are required to first generate and submit site-specific environmental impact assessment EIA reports to NESRIA. According to the 2011 regulations, the installation of telecommunication base stations must comply with the following uh, requirements. First of all, it must not have any negative effect on the host and immediate neighborhood. It must be in conformity with the plan of the particular area as well as the general plan of the host and immediate transit community. It must not be detrimental to uh, environmental protection, public health, public safety, and the general welfare. It must comply with all extant natural conservation laws and regulations relating to the siting of facilities near any protected or ecologically sensitive areas. And then it must have an environmental compliance signage issued by NESRIA. Furthermore, the 2011 regulations provide that all new facilities shall primarily be located in industrial, commercial, and business areas. I shall have a minimum setback of 10 meters from the perimeter wall of fence of residential premises, business premises, schools, hospitals, and so on. In a situation where there is no fence or perimeter wall, the 2011 regulations require that um, telecommunications base stations or facilities must be located after a minimum setback distance of 12 meters from the wall of residential and business premises, schools, or hospitals. In closing, I must acknowledge that um, with the NCC's guidelines on the technical specifications on the installations of Telecommunications Masts and Towers 2009, which stipulated 5 meters as against next year's 10 meters setback, now being replaced by the guidelines on technical specifications for the deployment of infrastructure in the communication sector in Nigeria 2023, which provides for 10 meters. The rift or differences in the next year's 2011 regulations and the NCC's 2009 guidelines have been put to a permanent rest. Definitely. For any questions on this lecture, please feel free to send in your mail to biglaw at alemsolicitors.com. Thank you very much and best wishes from Harlem.